All right, welcome to the uh, town council meeting of the town of Southwest Ranches. If you can please call the roll. Mayor Breikers? Here. Vice Mayor Jablonski? Here. Councilmember Albritton? Present. Councilmember Hartman? Here. Councilmember Kaczynski? Here. We have a quorum, Mayor. Very good. If you'll please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, welcome. It's great to see a good group here tonight. We always appreciate that. And um, I wanted to start off this evening. We have a very good friend of the town of Southwest Ranches here with us this evening. Um, Senator Gary Farmer is here. And I, I just want to say a few words, Gary, before you come up. We, um, you know, we have had our challenges in the past. And, and honestly, I can say that um, with some of our neighbors, and I can honestly say that we have always strived to number one, survive because it's been it's been hostile at times, um, but second, to do the right thing, simply to protect our residents. And and a lot of times we've we've been penalized that, but we've always had an individual in our corner who didn't even directly represent us, just just an individual that's trying to do the right thing. And um, and 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 that's Gary Farmer, who's going to step up here in a minute. He has saved us uh, numerous times. Um, when, uh, when our neighbor to the south was attempting to annex part of our town without our, any, any permission for us, uh, Gary stepped up and he did the right thing. It's not like he took our side, he simply did the right thing. And, and he's done that over and over and over again. Huge uh, thank you, Gary, for all you've done. Uh, amazing. Um, and, and I'm so thrilled to have you here this evening if you just come up and say a few words. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, you know, as, as uh, a true uh, product of Broward County, born in Holy Cross Hospital back in 1964, uh, don't let these boyish looks fool you, um, <laughs> having grown up around here, I remember when my best friend moved out west and, and I used to drive out to visit him and it felt like, you know, I was almost in Naples. <laughs> you hear those jokes all the time. But having watched how the growth has occurred, and the thing to me about Southwest Ranches is you all have just developed this 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 atmosphere and this home uh, uh, community. And I, and I use that word a lot because I think it's a word that gets lost. When you're in a community, it's about working together. And that means communities next to each other sometimes need to work together. And sometimes that happens and sometimes it gets a little, a little competitive and a little uh, uh, cantankerous. But, uh, I did run for office to help people and do the right thing. And uh, I, I, I tip my hat to you all because this community has really kept the feel and the vibe of the openness and, and, and the setting that you want to have. And, and that's your right. And, you know, the other thing I'll just say, and I know you have a lot of business to go, and I don't want to take up too much time. Uh, home rule is under attack in Tallahassee on a regular basis. I, I mean, that is oh, the issue du jour almost every day, every week in the Tallahassee, we take up some sort of bill that talks about taking away the rights of the locally elected officials. The people, you all see your constituents every day at the gas station, at the Publix, at the soccer fields, at wherever it may be, you're closest to your constituents and you ought to be the ones making a lot of those decisions because not all communities are the same. Not all communities want to be the same. And so it was always my honor to, I, I, I just have a rule. I want to lay my head down on that pillow at night and feel proud about what I did that day. And uh, uh, working with the city of Southwest Ranches has always given me that comfort and I've always slept very well uh, in the things I, I've done uh, with you all. And so I really appreciate this opportunity. I, I am, uh, um, uh, after six years in the Senate, they've, they've cut my district up. They've. Uh, uh, gerrymandered it out. I guess I fought a little too hard up there, uh, but some personal situations, uh, particularly, you know, uh, 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 my mom passed away last year and my dad, and I want to be with him. So being around here is what I want to do, and I'm running for judge now. So uh, as a lawyer for 31 years, I kind of feel like I'm getting back to my roots, uh, And uh, but it's been a pleasure being in the Senate, and it's been a pleasure working with great people. You all have great teams.
teams that come up to Tallahassee. Uh, Keith Polyakov has been a great friend, keeping me informed, keeping me uh, up to date on what's happening here. And uh, I just want to commend all of you for your great public service and, and the true sense of community you have here in Southwest Ranches. It's what you know all you know Florida should strive for. So thank you, Mr. Mayor, for this opportunity to visit with you all, and, and thank you for the kind words. I really absolutely, appreciate it. Absolutely, and thank, thank you for stopping by. All right. Um, all right. We have a proclamation this evening that I'm very excited about. Um, if we can go ahead and uh, read that proclamation into the record. Absolutely, Mayor. Whereas India represents one of the most ancient civilizations integrating people from diverse cultures, backgrounds, and religions for centuries, and whereas such integration of religious and cultural freedom is manifested in the celebration of many festivals throughout India and many countries in the world, and whereas over one billion celebrants worldwide reverently observe the festival of Diwali, symbolizing the victory of Dharma, good over evil, and bringing light in the form of knowledge, serenity, hope, and universal well-being. And whereas Diwali is one of the most celebrated festivals of great significance to Hindus, Sikhs, Jains, and Buddhists. And whereas Diwali falls on Monday, October 21st this year, 24th this year, excuse me, in accordance with the lunar calendar and brings together families, friends, and communities here in the United States and around the globe in goodwill, peace, and a shared sense of renewal. And whereas the U.S. Congress officially passed unanimous resolutions since 2007 recognizing the religious and historical significance of Diwali. And whereas celebrants renew their commitment to upholding values of truth, non-harming, and restraint through their thoughts, words, and actions. And whereas Diwali signifies a special time of peace and serenity with the hope of building bridges of understanding and tearing down barriers of intolerance. And whereas Diwali is celebrated by many Hindus as a day of thanksgiving for the homecoming of Lord Rama and the beginning of the new year for many Hindus. And whereas for Sikhs, Diwali is celebrated as the day that the sixth founding Sikh guru or revered teacher, teacher Guru Hargobind, was released from captivity by the Mughal Emperor Jahangir. And whereas for Jains, Diwali marks the anniversary of the attainment of moksha, or liberation by Mahavira, the great teachers of the Jain Dharma. And whereas for Buddhists, especially Nuar Buddhists, Diwali is commemorated as Ashoka Vijay Dashmi, the day the great emperor Ashoka embraced Buddhism as his faith. Now therefore be it pro resolved that the town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, does hereby recognize the religious and historical significance of Diwali and its message of tolerance, compassion, and the victory of good over evil, which resonates with the American spirit. And be it further resolved that the town of Southwest Ranches proudly expresses its deepest respect for Indian Americans and South Asian Americans throughout the world and here in the town of Southwest Ranches community, and all those who celebrate the festival of Diwali on October 24, 2022, and likewise encourages all the people of the town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, to join us in recognizing the contributions of all Hindu, Sikhs, Jains, and Buddhists, active in all aspects of our vibrant community and civic society. Dated this 13th day of October, 2022, by the Mayor, Steve Breikus. Thank you. Thank you, Russell, for reading that in. Um, I wanted to just say a couple more words to add on to that. I, you know, we, we live in a world that uh, has a tendency to divide itself more than unite itself too often. And um, this type of proclamation speaks so highly of these, these different religious groups that, that share um, this culture together and, and have found ways to unite. And, and that just I, I, I just, I can't express how much um, that personally means to me and how much that means to our town. Um, you know, we have this run, um, you know, unity and diversity in that we, we know, you know, we all have different backgrounds. We all have different 
origins. We all have different experiences growing up. We all have so many things that, that could divide us. But, but we work hard. You all work so hard um, to come together. And we're stronger. And we're better. And we are a much more vibrant community because of all that uh, everyone brings to our community. We're thrilled to have you here. I'm super thrilled that you all made it here this evening. Um, and, and I just thank you for all that you do. You know, this, this is one night of recognition, but you all, you all do so much throughout the whole year, and we are just thrilled um, to have this event. So thank you so much. Mayor. Mayor, uh, Mr. Raj Verma, sitting in the front row, would like to say a few words. On Perfect. Of the awesome. Thank you. Honorable Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of the Town Council, Town Manager, and Town Attorney, and the City Staff. So Mr. Mayor, may I just ask for just a couple of minutes more if I go Absolutely. out the limits? Absolutely. On behalf of the South Florida Hindu Temple, Shiva Vishnu Temple, Sikh Society Gurdwara, Sikh Youth Association, and my Hindu, Sikh, Jain, and Buddhist brethren. It is a great honor to accept tonight's Diwali proclamation. I thank the town's leadership for bestowing this great distinction on us. You are probably the only town that I know of, although we have proclamations from many places throughout the country where you have brought everybody together. This is a unique distinction where I have, you know, we have Sikh friends and Jain friends and the Buddhist friends you know, in the crowd. So we truly appreciate it. So to a large, so first, before I read any further, let me recognize a lot of people who are here, and I apologize if I miss somebody. So we have uh, Mr. Jaswinder Singh, Raj Chopra, Gurinder Pannu, Hardev Singh from the Sikh Society. Then we have Shekhar Reddy from uh, Hindu American PAC. Ram Tiwari, he's from Hindu American PAC. Dilip Narsian from uh, South Florida Hindu Temple. And then you have uh, Dr. Mohan Gupta from South Florida Hindu Temple. Then we have Makanjit Singh, Parneet Singh, Manjit Singh uh, from the Sikh Gurdwara uh, group. And then we have uh, Dr. and Mrs. Uh, uh, Shaker over here. And I have with me my, uh, my, my wonderful wife, uh, Usha Verma. <laughs> and my, my, uh, my brother-in-law, Sankar uh, Varier, and, if, and, and, one, and Mr. Nareesh Basin. If, if I'm forgetting somebody, I truly, truly apologize. So let me read for the record, to a large extent, Diwali is a reaffirmation of India's 12,000 plus years of Sanatan Dharma, uh, commonly known as Hinduism, that taught us the great virtues of seeking knowledge, truth, living in peaceful harmony with the surroundings, tolerance, acceptance, and assimilation. Many of these same principles are enshrined in the constitutions of both United States and India, the strongest and the largest democracies of the world. The Hindus, Sikhs, Jains, and Buddhists celebrate no less than 40 different festivals throughout the year, with at least 12 during the month of October, depending upon the lunar calendar. Hence, October is the most significant month with Diwali as the key festival, making it a truly Hindu heritage month. Your various clauses in the proclamation aptly describe the virtues of Diwali and Hinduism, so I will not repeat them here. The aforementioned four faiths sprouting from the same roots of Hinduism have seen a recent spike in ethnic attacks against them as reported by FBI, something there that you elaborated uh, eloquently. We are still deciphering the cause or causes of these unprovoked attacks, but they are becoming more widespread by the day. Certain vested interests are even calling for ethnic cleansing of the Hindus as evidenced by recent incidents in Leicester and Birmingham, England. The increase in hate crimes has forced Indian government to issue travel advisory to Canada. Southwest Ranches has two Hindu temples and one Sikh Gurdwara. Against this backdrop, we are requesting the town's leadership to please raise the awareness amongst your law enforcement personnel. It is important that we remain vigilant. In conclusion, 
as the world population grows, resources become scarce, rivalries multiply. On this festive occasion of Diwali, and continuing the great values of our 12,000 plus years of Sanatan Dharma, we, the Hindus, Sikhs, Jains, Buddhists, as one of the most law-abiding and model citizens, bring the message of peace, enlightenment, harmony, tolerance, acceptance, and upholding all the great values that binds us as one race, the human race. Thank you and wishing all of you Diwali and bestowing upon us this great recognition. We truly appreciate it. Happy Diwali to you and Sat Sri Akal. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, do we wanna, let's, let's, can we take a photo? Would that be okay? That would be awesome, yes. Yeah, so we, we have one individual that just had knee surgery, so it's tough for him to move around. So we're going to stay up here. If you could just and, and yes, join here. And we'll, we'll be in the back. Yeah. Yes, awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. There you are, all right. <laughs> I'm going to lean on you. So All right, that's fine. fine. Don't run away. Okay? Be still. <laughs> I'll turn this way for Bob. <laughs> so Bob can get in. All right, kind sir. You okay? You good? Good. All right. Why don't you knock that microphone down, Jim? Got it. There you go. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. All right. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Happy Diwali. Thank you. Namaste, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you again. My pleasure. It's our pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it kind of puts things in perspective. Yeah. Gavin Cataracts, though? So, had it done two years ago. <coughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it worked out pretty good. Let's go ahead and uh, get get uh, the agenda back going again. Um, the, the next item on our agenda is the public comment. Um, I want to make a couple comments before we get into it. This is going to be a little bit different public comment than what we, we normally have. Um, certainly anybody is welcome uh, to sign up and speak in public comment. Um, I'm normally pretty li liberal about uh, the time that uh, I allow folks to speak in public comment because I think it's critical. Um, it's going to be a little bit different this evening. I'm still going to be pretty liberal <laughs> in my, what I allow. But um, we're going to, everyone is Welcome to come up and speak in public comment as they normally do. But we have a particular issue going on in town that has to do with fill that was uh, delivered in uh, the area of Sunshine Ranches. And, and, and there's been a lot of uh, discussion about it from a couple different angles. And so what, uh, what I wanted to do this evening was uh, I contacted Chris and I contacted George and, and I said I'd really like to uh, at the end of public comment, 
um, as part of public comment, but at the end, um, have, have, a, have a discussion specifically on this item. And, and I expect that uh, it, it's going to take some time. So, so I look forward to, you know, I know that you all um, will uh, listen in and, and participate in this. And, and it's really important. It's, it's, it's important from the standpoint of ensuring that our process is as good as possible. And uh, if we need to adjust it in any way, that we're able to do that. It's important from the standpoint that um, there were, you know, some communications going around that are not, not real positive. And, and I get that. Um, I get that there's frustration out there. And, and I have found for myself personally uh, the best way to kind of get past that frustration is have the opportunity to be heard and heard completely. And, and be understood what they, where the concerns are. So, so that's what we're going to be about tonight. I, I am going to leave the time frame very open. Um, what I am going to ask is that we focus on the issues, not on any personalities. Um, and that um, I'll be up here taking notes for specifically about things that need to be changed or improved or whatever. Um, so that we can take that back and, uh, and I'll, I'll bring that, as I'm sure the rest of the council will, to Andy and the administration and, um, and be able to, uh, you know, make any changes that, that we need to make. Um, I also uh, want to include that we have an incredibly hardworking staff in this town. And it's a staff that I am incredibly proud of that works hard every day. And... Um, Nobody is perfect. I can tell you with certainty that your mayor is not perfect. And, um, and so, uh, you know, that's why we're here to talk about things, see if there's any areas of improvement. But the one thing that I really won't tolerate um, in, the, in the conversations today is any kind of um, personal attack towards anybody on the council, any other residents, or any of the staff. That's not what this is about. It's not an open forum for that. It's an open forum to, to hear the facts, to go over the facts and to determine how we can improve the process. So with that, uh, with that introduction, um, we'll open up with public comment as we normally do. We'll go through the, um, uh, the regular cards if we've got any. And then at the end, I believe, uh, Chris, just correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Marianne will speak towards uh, some of the, represent Sunshine Ranch's HOA. So it's not representing. No, 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 no. These are residents. Thank you. I, I need for you to come up at the mic. Thank you. Christina Brownlow. There's an A at the end of the name. 5301 Thoroughbred Lane. No, do not put in the minutes that this is the ranch's versus. Absolutely not. Thank you for clarifying. This, this is, um, and I need, I expect that that was heard right now. Uh, Mary Ann, I am giving her my full time to present everything. I would also like for you to make sure you listen to resident Mac Rivenbeck. I've taken myself out of the equation for a number of reasons. So I will just be sitting in the audience. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for clarifying that. And then, um, uh, I've asked George to also speak um, related to this matter. So what we'll do is we'll have a, a, a prob I think what's probably going to be a, a pretty sig significant presentation from Mary Ann, then one from George. Um, I'm going to then go back to Mary Ann if there's any questions or th follow-up items you want to do, and then we'll go back to George for a final follow-up item, and then, and then we will take what we, then we will cut it off there. Um, and we will take what we've heard and what we've learned, and we will uh, take action from what we, what we see. Okay? So, uh, with those ground rules, let's open up public comment. Sure. Uh, Mayor, um, there are only four speakers for public comment. Okay. All, all four wish to discuss the matter that uh, you just elaborated on. Just to make sure I'm correct on this, is there anyone else who wishes to speak in public comment tonight not on any issue relating to Phil. Okay. 
Seeing that, that there's four speakers, um, I don't know if you want to go in the order of the speakers or how you would like to So, So what, what I'm going to do, as I just said, I want, I want to keep this topic to those two individuals. So, but I'm never going to deny someone for coming up here and speaking. So what, I would, what I'm going to say is, you know, those two individuals need to be last, as I, as I pointed out. Okay. The other two would need to be before that, or the others would need to be before that. And in this case, I am going to ask you to stick with the three minutes, because we're going to have a full presentation from the other representatives. All right. So, Mayor, what, what we'll do then is, um, as uh, Christina mentioned, uh, we'll call up Mac uh, Rivenbark as first. Uh, John Stephen Grotti as second, Mary Gay Chaples as third, followed by Marion Allen, and then George Morris. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. All right. Mac, if you please uh, start us off. Um, no, that's not, that's, not how we're, that's not how we're going about it. I'm sorry. Good evening. My name is Mac Rivenbart. I own two properties, one at 6750 Appaloosa Trail and the other one at 6800 Appaloosa Trail. Uh, these properties uh, make together a total of five acres. I bought one of the properties six years ago. The other property I recently bought 18 months ago with my wife, my two children, my grandchildren to live our American dream of growing orchids in Southwest Ranches. I'm here today to discuss the actions taken by town employees with permitting for my new neighbor who I'm, whom I now share an entrance and driveway easement with, that's Deborah and George Morris. On Friday, September 30th, I was told by the tenant of George Norris, who's a horse boarder, that he would be bringing some fill on Saturday and covering her best grass. I mentioned to her that Mr. Morris needs a permit. She said Mr. Morris said he did not. I called Mr. Morris, Mr. Morris, told me he did not need a permit. I informed him I was well aware of the permitting issues here in Southwest Ranches because I've gone through, my, through them myself. And with that, he said he did not need a permit. After that, I called code enforcement, it was still time on Friday, to let them know that somebody would probably be doing some illegal filling on Saturday. I gave them permission to view that illegal filling from my property. I'm producing evidence today that on Saturday, October 1st, George Morris allowed 41 dump trucks to illegally put fill and dirt on his property. 41. I have pictures of each truck that I will produce and a timestamp of each. George applied for a level two permit Monday and was granted that permit quickly for someone who was in egregious code violations over the weekend. That level two per permit, according to your engineer, allowed him eight trucks of fill dirt on Monday, the 3rd of October. I'm now producing photographic evidence that 17 trucks dropped fill dirt on Monday, well over the amount. So to make that clear, he has at 58 trucks now when he's supposed to be at eight. Now I understand he has been given a permit allowing him to bring up to 538 dump trucks of fill onto his property. Yes, that was 538 dump trucks. That's excessive fill. I was told by Central Broward Water Management that he is allowed to raise his property one foot over 70% of his land. That's not 500 trucks of soil. That's 318 trucks of soil. That's over 2 million gallons of displaced water that's going to be pushed towards my home. Um, I share a pond with him. We split a pond evenly between the two properties. You cannot put a berm across a pond. You cannot put a berm around a pond. All of his fill where he's building, whatever he's building, will be pushed down and the water flow will go to our pond, which will flood my land and Mary Ann's my neighbors across the street. And that's why I'm very upset with this. Thank you for your time. Thank you. followed by Gay Chaples and then Marion Allen. Good evening, folks. How are you doing? I'm John Garotti, 162nd Avenue. Can you hear me now? Great. I'm here basically to address, I've heard the fill issue with um, Mr. Morris. I have nothing to do with that property, but I can say George Morris and PHI stands for pride, honesty, and integrity. The man works according to the law. How do I know? 
I'm a customer, and it was a smooth process, and everything was legal. I can't add anything much to this because I'm not a party to any of that, but I know that as a contractor, I've recommended him, and he's actually solved problems on my street by connecting neighbors to speak of do's and don'ts regarding Phil. That's pretty much what I wanted to say about George Morris and PHI. Thank you. You're welcome. Yay, and then Mary and Alan. Uh, I've been out of the circulation here. I mean, I thought we had, and I've certainly been to our master periodically, um, we have a very competent staff. When somebody brings a bucket full of fill on the property, they're, not, they're reported, and it's handled, and then they wind up going to court if they don't take care of it. Now, all of a sudden, it seems that that isn't good enough. And I, ha I, have no, I have no information at all on this, but I would think that it now has gotten to the point where we're going to have no satisfaction with the way something is handled, and we're going to go directly to the council, and we're going to throw it in their lap, and we're going to have personal debates on how this guy filled the land and how he didn't, when in reality, the drainage people have certain requirements. You have central, you have South Broward drainage. I'm working with South Broward on two projects. I can tell you that they're getting their footage and nobody can drain on anybody. So I'm just a little baffled about this and also that I heard from somebody else that it got very personal and even to the point where they were accusing that somebody was on the take. Let's, yeah, let's stay away from the personal gain. No, I'm just saying I heard that. So my concern is that now we've moved it out of the offices that are, that are in-house, our staff, and we're bringing it to you people because they weren't satisfied with what happened, evidently, how it happened in in the government end of it, so now we're going to dump it on the council and let the council make new rules, new regulations, new, 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 and handle it. Telling you guys, walking on really thin ice. Right, thank you, Gay. All right. Marianne. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. I wonder if I could say something about the um, Sikhs that were here, because I have sure. something in honor of them. One of my greatest heroes was Mahatma Gandhi. And this is, a, this is a night when a lot of us are despairing, and I think it's appropriate for me to say this. Mahatma Gandhi, this is a quote. When I despair, I remember that all throughout history, the way of truth and love have always won. There may be tyrants and there may be murderers, and for a time they seem invincible, but they always fall. Think of it, they always fall. And that's my honor to Mahatma Gandhi this evening. Thank you. Thank you. So truth and honor is what I'm here for, truth and love, because I love this community. I have no ax to grind. I didn't even know George was involved. I thought Mac was the perpetrator, okay? so. Let's begin, and we'll unravel, and we'll peel the onion layer by layer, all right? <clears throat> okay, so I live directly across, and for some reason, I saw the trucks on Saturday, and it was convoys, huge convoys of trucks, and I'm like, okay, let me just go and see if there's a permit, okay? So I better read this so I don't miss anything. I walk over, and I see no permits posted. That means I'm actually seeing illegal fill being brought. So I call our mayor, Steve Brykus, at 1230. He was in Fort Myers assisting. God bless you, Steve, for doing that. And he tells me to immediately call code and the police to stop the fill trucks. Since this is a Saturday and code department is closed, I called someone that had connection of the phone number to Julio to get my pictures and the information to Julio that the mayor wanted this stopped. 
Julio texted back that he would cite the owner on Monday, October the 3rd. On Monday, October 3rd, I was taking pictures of the trucks going in to 6810, and a pickup truck pulled up next to me and said, the gentleman in there said, don't worry, I have a level three permit. I said, what's your name? Because I didn't recognize him. And he identified himself as George Morris. He said, don't worry, Rod knows about this. I said, I've seen you at the last drainage board meeting. And since you are the chair of the drainage board, you of all people, you should know what the rules are. Because he assured me he was following all the rules. I also called the town code violation hotline and I spoke to Concepcion, who said there was no permit. However, she said one was being applied for. On Tuesday, October 4th, I called our mayor, Steve Brycruz, at around 12.30 p.m. He had just gotten back from Fort Myers and he said he would investigate the incident and get back to me and he thanked me for getting the information to Julio. On Thursday, October 6, I called Jace Selby, the district manager of Central Broward Water Control District. I asked him to check if 6810 Southwest 127th Avenue has a permit from them. He checks and he tells me, yes, they have a permit. But he doesn't know that I know how to ask questions. So I asked him, when did Central Broward issue a permit? He said Monday, October 3rd. And I asked him again, when did George apply for the permit? He said Monday, October 3rd. He then volunteered to me that George Morris phoned him Friday evening, September 30th at 6 p.m. I asked him, when does his office close? He said 4.30. I then asked him if it's usual for him to do business after hours at 6 p.m. on a Friday night. And he said George advised him that he would be getting phone calls over the weekend. Jace then said he met with George at the property on Monday, October 3rd, where George provided him an aerial map of the property, where Jace said he then approved the permit. He then said he would email the permit to me, which he did. On October 8th, I spoke with our representative at the town council, David Kaczynski. I asked him how he felt about what happened with the illegal fill done on October 1st. He said to me he was furious that he had been lied to by George Morris on September 30th, the night before, when George told him that he had the permits, which was a lie. He also said George told him the exact same thing that George told Jace, that he would be getting phone calls over the weekend. David said this was totally wrong. All righty, that's step one. All right. So then I'm going to go to some of the, now that we have the facts, now we can go to some of the internal um, memos from Andy to our attorney. And he says to Keith, in answer to your email, there have been a limited number of instances in which we have required fill to be removed from a property. These are normally the most egregious cases and where our fill permit requirements are blatantly or deliberately avoided. <clears throat> This case is a bit different. George Morris submitted his fill permit before he brought fill in. Well, we now know that that's not the case. The fill was brought in October 3rd, I mean, I mean October 1st, and he's claiming here that he had the permit when he brought the fill in. And also he says, he had been in touch with Central Broward Water Control District and a wetlands determination had been made. He also had ordered his topo survey, meaning topographical. Well, you're supposed to have a topographical prior to applying for the town permit, which is on your rules, which I've memorized. So that didn't happen. 
to be clear, he said, and this is um, Andy, to be clear, no permit had been issued when the fill was brought in. But yet in the first line he says George Morris submitted his fill before he brought fill in. So you see how this is contradictory already? And I'm just bringing facts because some of this is not clear to me. So Andy's claiming, to be clear, no permit had been issued when the fill was brought in. Since the fill was brought in, and he uses this word prematurely, now is this how you validate an illegal, an illegal fill? Procedure, Marianne. Let's let's. I'm just saying don't I don't understand. Let's just just bring the facts, okay. please. Okay, he says a penalty of a double permit fee, which is I think around three hundred dollars, was imposed. Okay, that's important to know. This is the statement that really has bothered the residents of the Sunshine Ranches. He says staff is aware of some pre-existing animosity in the community. Uh, he's making claims that, number one, haven't been validated. I don't have animosity. Mac doesn't have previous animosity. So I think that's um, a statement that you could look at and determine whether that was appropriate. All right. <clears throat> now, again, we have another letter that was sent to the mayor and council. <sighs> Of note, and I preface this by stating it is not my intention to take sides in this matter, I am only concerned with the facts of the situation. For those of you who may be unaware, there is a pre-existing pre -existing history of tension between George Morris and members of the SRHA. <laughs> and he just said he didn't want to take sides. Why did he not reach out to the residents who are impacted by this illegal fill operation to get the facts? I don't know. This is for you to find out. It appears that while George was attempting to operate properly, he was attempting to operate properly while he brought in over 50 loads. Right, of course. He did get things out of order by bringing in the fill before the permits were issued. Then he says he compounded the problem by beginning to spread rather than merely stockpiling. I personally advised him on Monday he should never have done so. So some of these statements are contradictory if I understand English. I'm sorry. You're going to have to look into this. <sighs> and this is from um, Russell. Uh, Russell uh, states, okay, here is what I was able to piece together on this issue based on conversations with George Morris, who came into town hall today, Julio and Rod. Friday, September 30th, George's wife, Deborah, dropped off a fill permit application at town hall. George advised that he was advised late in the day on Friday that he could acquire much needed fill and would have it delivered on Saturday, he knew the short notice would preclude him from getting all of the approvals he would need to get a fill permit issued before the fill was to be delivered. Um, I had a meeting with your engineer yesterday, Rod, and he was asked if he had any permit in hand October 3rd, which was Monday. He told us that there was no application from George Morris, so you're going to have to investigate how that those two statements don't jive with each other. George. <clears throat> um, I know Rod was looking through his paperwork, and he said uh, twice he had no application from George as of October the 3rd. Now, all right, so what was the reason for getting all of this fill it was much needed fill. Was it that the fill was cheap? I don't know. But it doesn't seem like a valid reason to be breaking um, your permitting process. Pardon me? Was there a question? Ask those in uh, residence that are not at the podium to please right. not comment 
um, we, we got to keep this respectful. There's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of, uh, you know, strife on both sides. And, and just those under breath comments um, make it more difficult to come to a resolution here. So please allow the, the speaker with respect and to finish the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. According to George, and this is from Russell, he contacted David Kaczynski and advised that he may get several calls over the weekend as he anticipated bringing several truckloads of fill to the property. I don't know what several means to you. I mean, probably several should be a handful. We now know that that was not the case. He also advised that he contacted Jay Selby of Central Broward Water Control District and advised that he needed to get a fill permit with the town. According to George, Jace told him no problem, but since it was later in the day, he could get the approval first thing Monday morning. It wasn't later in the day, it was six o'clock in the evening when the office was closed. Saturday, 10-1, truckloads of fill were brought onto the property. There's no mention of how many, and according to the town's own fill permit, you have to say how many loads you want on your permit, and you have to say how it's going to be monitored. There's been no monitoring of the fill going into the property. Monday, 10-3, George Morris obtained approval from Central Broward. He then was able to obtain a level two permit from the town. So George requested a level two on Monday, and according to Roger Engineer, a level two has a maximum of eight truckloads. George posted the fill permit sign in front of the property, but it's difficult to see from the roadway because George's property is all the way in the back. You can't see George's property from Appaloosa. Mac Rivenback contacted the town over concerns with the fill being brought in and believed that the level two permit was insufficient for the amount of fill being brought in. Julio sent Marlon to the site after a receiving a report that 1515 truckloads had been brought onto the site. Marlon issued a stop work order as the level two issue was insufficient for this amount of fill. She didn't know that over 50 had already been brought in. Tuesday, 10-4, George having been made aware of the stop work order, commissioned a topographic survey. You're supposed to do that before you apply for any of this. However, okay, and he submitted the survey to upgrade the level two permit to a level three permit. For all of you that don't understand, a level two permit is eight truckloads. The same day, he was issued a level three permit which is 9,700 cubic yards, or over 500 truckloads. George was assessed an after-the-fact penalty as his permit was issued on 10-3, and the fill was brought in on 10-1. As I said, it seems like a slap on the wrist for $300, but however, we're gonna address that. George indicated that he did take down the violation stop work order, which by the way is a violation under the law, but only after he received the level three permit. <clears throat> so on October 3rd, I received an, an email from our resident and military veteran, Mac Rivenback. He says, my new neighbor, a builder behind me, without a permit, dropped 40 truckloads of dirt this last Saturday as to avoid code enforcement. My neighbor has an easement through the middle of my property. I have put in calls to David Kaczynski, town council member, and Julio Medina, code enforcement for Southwest Ranches, and water management district manager, Jay Selby. After speaking with everyone, Julio Medina says he's sending someone over today to put a stop work sign on the property until the proper permits have been submitted and approved. Meanwhile, 10 more trucks or more have already gone through my property today to reach the property in the back to illegally put more fill. I've never met my neighbor until this event and 
got this email from him. And <clears throat> what I want to say, and I want to encapsulate everything, is with the last statement here. And, this is, and these are questions I have for the town. The, and the reason this is so egregious. Why would Mr. Morris, chair of the drainage board, member of the comprehensive planning board, and a general contractor who has extensive knowledge of our town's code, submit a level two fill permit application on October 3rd for a maximum of eight truckloads when he had already brought into the subject property more than over 50. Why did the town approve Mr. Morris's level two fill permit when the town, according to an email sent by the town administrator on Friday, October 7th, acknowledged that it was already, that it was already aware that Mr. Morris had brought in over three times the amount in just two days prior? How did the town approve a level three permit as submitted by Mr. Morris on October 4th with a maximum of 9,700 cubic yards when the town received an outdated topographic survey dated back to 2000, uh, uh, 2021? If Mr. Morris's outdated topographic survey from 2021 was acceptable to the town, for satisfying the requirements for a level three permit, then why did Mr. Morris even apply for a level two permit? In an email sent by the town, and I've read to you about this being a very egregious case where it is then required to have the fill removed and a stop order put on a property. If Mr. Morris, who has a history of repeated fill violations knowingly and willfully violated our code, then why did the town not require him to remove the fill as the town had required other offenders to do so? Why did the town approve a level three permit for Mr. Morris with expedited processing on the same day it was submitted when the town was aware that the fill application submitted and received by the town included false representations by the applicant. How did the town approve the level three permit for Mr. Morris when according to the town engineer, he had not done a proper pre-site evaluation to see what had already been done prior to permitting? According to Rod, our engineer, Yesterday, he admitted to us that he only did a drive-by, possibly Tuesday or Wednesday after the fact, and had not gotten out of his car to look at the site, but had seen it from the road. And all of you now realize you can't see the property from the road, so that needs to be looked into as well. How did the town approve the Level 3 permit for Mr. Morris when, according to the town engineer, he was not aware or did not realize the existence of any such ponds that adjoined the applicant's property with the adjacent property until he was informed at a meeting with the adjacent property owner. And my last two, and I'll be done. What kind of precedent would be established if no significant action is taken by the town in this case? What message would you send to the residents? How can we prevent future violation of the town's permitting processes when the penalties are just almost non-existent? What disciplinary actions should be implemented by the town when such egregious conduct like this has taken place? And with that, gentlemen, I thank you for listening to me, and I applaud our mayor for the courage and for his kindness in letting us speak tonight. Thank you, all of you, for listening. Thank you, Marianne. Appreciate uh, all the research in there. All right. Um, George, the podium is yours. Good evening, Council. Mayor, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Marianne, for that speech. You had a lot of facts, but you were missing a lot of information. Um, I'm going to read this that I have in front of me. It's also, I have different exhibits. Um, some of the claims that Marianne is making is absolutely false. 
but if she believes it, then she believes it. George, let's stay away from the personalities. Just, just report your, you know. Okay. Um, basically, stepping back a little bit, on December the 15th, 2021, I purchased this 4.5 acre property, which is behind Max's nursery. He has a very nice nursery. I bought it because I needed a more secure property because I have a bona fide agricultural uh, business that my daughter has, and she has sheep. I raise sheep. I had a, another property just down the road. It was on Appaloosa. It was uh, an open five-acre property. Um, I took a lot of losses with coyotes, um, devastated the herd. This property came to me. It's about a five-acre, just under five-acre uh, property, same size. It offered more security, had a barn, fenced, etc. Horses uh, had been boarded there for many years and have continuously been boarded there uh, throughout the ownership of the property. Um, prior to closing on the property in 2021, December 2021, several months back, I commissioned the wetland determination, also commissioned a comprehensive survey that included information from the health department topographical survey on a 50-foot grid along with the structures and, you know, and, and the buildings. It's a, I didn't just get a vacant land survey, I wound up getting a, a total survey that would be able to be used for building, construction, field, etc. Um, that topographical survey which the town has, um, it, it shows the property is, is lower than the average elevation. Um, the surrounding neighbors um, It's much lower than the surrounding neighbors. So basically, the property to the south, I'm not sure the owner's name. They have a barn there. You can stand on my property, and it's much lower. You can look up at the barn and see the barn there. Max has his property. Um, he's got a house on it. It's built up for the house. Um, it's also built up for where he has his uh, orchids and stuff like that. It's built up pretty high, and it slopes onto my property. Not a problem. I'm really not complaining. Um, but my property's low. It's undeveloped. There's no house. There's, there's, there's nothing there. Uh, the property was in need of, of maintenance. It had a lack of maintenance. The horses were there. The horses trod on, on the dirt that was there. It was muck. It was compounded. It decomposed over time. Um, therefore, the conditions were condu conducive for me to bring in much needed fill, um, which had been composed over time. The property had previously, again, been under-maintained. Um, Again, the property was behind Mr. Mack's house. And we do share a shared easement. Apparently, the, the property may have been 10 acres, and then someone divided the back half, and then they made a deal back in, I don't know, I think it was the 70s, where I have an easement going through his property. I, I talk with him to try and move the easement away from his house. It's very close to his house. It's, it, it would be very annoying to have trucks going up and down his house, maybe 20 foot from his house. On uh, Friday, September 30th, um, I got a call. I had somebody that was removing Phil. I had a deal. I couldn't make a deal to bring it onto my property. It was a very good deal. It wasn't muck. It wasn't roots. It wasn't stumps. It, it was very good stuff. It was uh, adequate for the horses, etc. So in an effort to be transparent and upfront about my activities that I was wanting to do, I actually notified a lot of the people, I guess I heard Max had called. I notified Central Broward Water District, Jace. I called Southwest Ranch's code enforcement. I jokingly said to Julio, you know, there's gonna be some filling tomorrow. Um, I also contacted uh, the town council, the district representative in that area, okay? I basically said that I had the opportunity to su secure some long-awaited sandy material for my agricultural farm and horse paddocks. Um, unfortunately, I guess now, it was only available to be delivered the next day on Saturday. It was something that came up quick. Um, on October 1st, after I had all those conversations, um, I spoke to the different people from South Broward Danish District, um, et cetera. 
I notified them that I would be working there on Saturday to try and be, as, again, as I said, transparent as possible. No one had any objections. They didn't have objections because I ensured them that I had the adequate topographical survey on a 50-foot grid. I also had a wetland determination. I wasn't harming the, any wetlands because there weren't any. I had done the topographical survey that was required for a level three fill permit. So there would, really was no reason to deny a, a permit. Um, on Friday, basically, I submitted, prior to bringing in anything, I submitted a fill permit. Um, I believe Russell can put it up on the screen as Exhibit C, if you don't mind. So it was stated earlier that ex Exhibit C. Which is? A fill permit application. I basically, I emailed on Friday. I sent it to Julio engineering and zoning. I also included in that as proof that I had a wetland uh, determination that was done when I purchased the property and that certificate is actually valid for two years. So it was valid at the time. There at the top from GLM, that's my email address, fill permit application 6810 Appaloosa Trail. It was submitted on September 30th prior to any fill being brought to the property. I sent it to uh, Julio Medina to let him know. Because I am aware of the controversy in the town, and God forbid you do bring in, you know, the system works. We have a great system. We've educated the public. You know, everybody's going to call. They're going to follow the trucks, et cetera. I'm, I'm aware of the system. I just wanted to, again, previously that I contacted those people to assure them that I had the proper information to be able to pull a level three fill permit. Um, so that, you're, you're scrolling through two different emails that were sent. Uh, one was the wetland determination ahead of time, and one was the permit application ahead of time prior to me bringing in the first load of fill. Um, also, um, the, the wetland determination, if I can, we can put it up on the screen really quick, was Exhibit A. Just want people to know that I had that. That's the most important thing. And that's where people get into trouble when they spread fill and they cover up wetlands, and that's when it really has to be removed. Um, again, I had sent the, the wetland determination along with the fill application to the zoning engineer at Southwest Ranches via email, which is what's been displayed up on the board. Um, I assured everybody that I had a valid topographical survey, but the only thing that I was waiting for was basically I didn't have it in hand. The survey company had it. I, I didn't have a copy of it. I knew I had it. I knew it was done. I didn't have it. I was waiting for the survey company to send it to me. If not, I would have sent it on Friday. I had to wait, unfortunately, until Tuesday to obtain that in my hand. Um, so again, I just want to, just for the record, just to, you know, the, the topographical survey was done on December last year, 2021. Again, while I was at the property on Friday evening, I happened to speak with Mr. Rivenback. And out of courtesy, I let him know that I would be bringing in Phil the next day. His immediate reaction to me at the time was, you can't do that. Well, I assured him that I had the proper paperwork and I had submitted the stuff. I did not have the permit in my hand, no, but I did notify everybody that I, what I was about to do. So I was certainly being transparent and, and open. On uh, Saturday, October the 1st, I brought in Phil. The first thing I started to do was to build the berm surrounding the property. That was per the requirement from Central Broward Water District of the approved plan of record, Exhibit D. Russell, if you could pull up Exhibit D, please. So part of my plan and approval to get a fill permit was very important in the top left hand corner I have cross sections it required me because central Broward requires to put a berm with a four to one slope can be a one foot tall four foot wide etc that was required to go around the entire perimeter of the property again it's a 4.45 acre lot it has approximately 1,000 
908 linear feet around the property. And that was a requirement for me to install a berm for level two, level three, fill permit for construction, for whatever. Um, on that day, on October the 1st, the majority of the material bought in on Saturday and Monday was used to construct the required berm. They stated I brought in 41 loads. That's true. They stated um, Monday I brought in 15, 18. It's true. If you do a calculation, simple math, and you take a four to one slope berm, one foot tall, four foot to the left, four foot to the right, times 1,908 linear feet, you're looking at approximately 50 truckloads, and that's if it's built perfectly. So I did need to bring in this field to construct the berm, because for me, it was very important to install the berm and follow my obligations that Central Broward uh, required me to do. When you establish a berm, it shows an, a line and a mound where water will, will be trapped either side. Your water can't leave your property, his water can't come on my property. So that was what the fill was being used for. Um, knowing that I was, uh, again, that I had, didn't have the topo, knowing that I would get a level two fill permit, I still needed to create this berm and that was the reason for bringing in the material. I wasn't spreading 47 loads of dirt, I was doing the berm. I also have photographs of that. Maybe we can just bring up some photographs. You didn't get the photographs? Well, I can share them with anybody that wants to see them. Um, so that was, that was the activity on Saturday. So I did bring in that amount of fill because I was required to build the berm and it would have taken a minimum of 50 trucks. Minimum. That would have had to have been done if I put a house. It's just, just a requirement. Okay. Again, on uh, Monday, October the 3rd, prior to noontime, I hand-delivered all the required paperwork and paid the permit fees. The package did not include a topographical survey since, unfortunately, my survey was unable to deliver it to me. Therefore, my request, my request for a level three permit was denied. No special treatment. They said, no, George, we cannot give you a level three permit. I understand you have a topo. We don't have it. Denied. They gave me a level two fill permit. And that's fine because during the level two fill permit, you need to build this berm. Yes, a level two fill permit is for approximately five to eight loads of dirt brought to the property and spread. I was using the material to build the berm and some was, you know, it was dumped on the ground and, and that's, that was my main goal. That, that's the reasoning for that. Um, I was issued that day on Monday, Monday morning before 12 o'clock in the afternoon, um, a fill permit 22-053. I was issued the permit, which might appear to be fast. The only reason why it was fast is because the system that the town council and drainage board to try and cut through the red tape to issue a permit is working. I had all of everything I needed up front. I had the topographical survey prior to any fill being delivered. I had a wetland determination. I had a site plan. I got the central Broward. It's not a big deal. If you know what you're doing, you can get it fast. This is afforded to everybody. No special treatment. Uh, and um, the permit that I got, the level two is exhibit E. Okay, it's up on the board. Um, the next day, Tuesday, October the 4th, after continuous harassing phone calls to the town of Southwest Ranches about me bringing in Phil, code enforcement, in my opinion, felt as if they had no other alternative to post a stop work red tag. I commended them for doing their job. In my opinion, the posting of red tag was an error since they had not considered the amount of material needed to comply with Central Broward Water Management approved site plan related to the installation of the perimeter berm that I recently discussed. So they were hearing from the residents saying that he brought in 52 trucks on, Monday, on Saturday and you know, he's exceeded his fill permit level for level two. Well, that's true. But at the same time, I had to build this berm. That was a requirement. How am I going to do that? It's something that need, needs to be done. This is something that the drainage board and town council talks about. This is a requirement, not even by the town. It's, it's Central Broward. This is how that side of the town works. On the other side of town, we convey water with swales. Okay? So once Julio, I'm sorry, Julio uh, Marlin came out, actually it was Marlin, 
within 20 minutes of posting the red tag, on Tuesday, I was able to call my surveyor and say, listen, man, you got my survey. I need it. You got to get it to me. Finally, they answered the phone. I said, send it to me right now. They sent it to me. I immediately sent it over to the town of Southwest Ranches. I sent it to Susan. I sent it to Julio in, in engineering. I believe that's exhibit B. It's an email. Exhibit C is emails. Oh, let's see. Did I get that wrong? I'm sorry, exhibit F. So exhibit F is dated October the 4th at 2.56 p.m. It was sent to Julio, Rod, and Susan. That was the topo that I had gotten in advance, but I didn't have possession of. If I would have had that on Friday, we wouldn't be standing here. After presenting that to them, I paid the required fees and received my upgraded level three permit, exhibit G. So I did receive a level three permit. The only thing that was holding me back was I, that dreaded survey that I did not have in my possession. Thus allowing me to continue the work, rendering the stop work tag null and void. Now, as Marianne said, there are some laws that you just can't walk up to a red tag and rip it down. You can't. I, I, I know that. I'm not exactly sure of the law, but I do respect the red tag. I do respect the, the, the system. I actually called Julio Medina and said, listen, um, I now have a level three permit. May I remove the tag? He told me yes. I removed the tag. Mr. Max was standing there, and I tried to explain to him that I had a level three field permit already. Look to your right that wasn't posted on my fence it was posted out by Appaloosa and I pulled down the red tag matter of fact I have it right here pulled it down didn't tear it up didn't throw it on the floor it was null and void I had permission from the town to remove it because um, I already had received my level three fill permit on Wednesday October the 5th even though the level three permit had already been processed the previous day. Christine Brownlow, without fact checking, sent out an inflammatory email filled with personal attacks containing defamatory language about me to the council members and staff, including copying residents within her own homeowners association. She misrepresented the facts and painted a very negative picture of me that is untrue and defamatory. She is now on a mission to defend her reckless mistakes at my expense. George. Mm, got it. Thank you. Um, she should have fact-checked. Um, I did reach out to her on several occasions, and she wouldn't talk to me. I did try to resolve this even tonight. I did try to talk to Mr. Max. He has his own perception, and that's fine. My goal was to resolve the situation. However, basically they refused to meet with me or even respond to my requests, texts, and phone calls. Um, in closing, the actual events that transpired proved that no favoritism was granted to me. If favoritism had been granted to me, I would have been issued a level three permit without providing a topo. My actions showed that I was transparent and upfront initiating phone calls on a day prior to the activities. During my 22 years of being involved with fundraising and volunteering activities within the town, I have always been sensitive and fastidious about making sure that I follow the rules and regulations regarding work within the town. I would like to take this opportunity to apologize to David Kaczynski. I did call him on Friday. I did tell him that I had all the stuff needed to pull the permit. It was late, it was six o'clock at night, he may have been in the middle of dinner, I may have been talking fast, it, my cell phone, I don't know, but he understood that I told him that I had a permit. I apologize for that. I should have made myself much clearer. The reason for calling you was because I didn't have all of the paperwork that I needed in my hand. The, the permit application was submitted, I had a topo, I had a wetland determination, there was no reason or rhyme to be able to deny me the permit, I had spoken to Jace, 
As a matter of fact, he had come out there first thing Monday morning. And with respect to Jace, I known him for a long time prior to even him accepting this position because I'm a, I work in this community and I have to meet with him to review, you know, projects and stuff and get approval. So I've known him for a very long time. I happened to have his cell phone number. That's it. I called his cell phone number. He didn't have to answer. He chose to answer. And I asked him if, told him what I was going to do and told him what did I need to do. And he told me about this berm that I needed to put. And I said, okay, cool. I have plenty of dirt coming. I'll work on the berm first thing. Um, so again, David, you know, I apologize if you were misled by, yeah, and I, I put you in a bad position. I feel horrible about it. You know, sometimes things happen like that, and it, it certainly wasn't my intention. I feel I'm, terrible. I have no ill feelings at all. I, I, I consider, I like you. I know. I, I appreciate it. So, I mean, I'm not going to hold a grudge, yeah. no. There's no way. I'm not, that's not me. I appreciate that. Um, after being cited by code, I basically received a letter of compliance dated October the 5th, 2022, Exhibit H. I was cited by code. They didn't know all the facts. They didn't know how to build this berm. I was able to get the level three fill permit on Tuesday. Um, this letter was dated a couple days later, a day later, um, that I basically had complied. Um, and at that point, you would think that this matter would be closed. I can't tell you why it wasn't or why the associate has been so mad at me or has refused to talk to me. I'm also a landowner in that, that area and you know, they should represent me as well, at least have had the, the courtesy to hear me out. Some, a, a couple of uh, just important facts I just wanna just reiterate. Uh, the wetland determination was done on November the 10th, 2020, 2021 and it, again is valid for two years. I was transparent. There was nothing wrong granting me a courtesy, knowing that I had everything in advance, being all the paperwork and documentation, etc. It's not uncommon to allow people to work without a permit, knowing that their application has been applied for. This this happens in different cities and, and has happened to me in, in this city with the building department. It's not uncommon. You can work with them. They'll work with you. This is what this town is about. This is the, how this town was formed. We didn't want to be Weston. We didn't want, you know, we wanted a small town where we could work together with people that we trust. Um, and I'm certainly not the first person to request this. There, there have been people in the past, you know, that have requested it and have been granted this courtesy. So I don't think I'm anybody special. I don't think I've been any sort of favoritism. Um, you know, and just real quick to address some of the things that were said prior to me coming up here. Um, with Mr. Max, I don't know where he came up with the fact that he, he said that I did not need a permit. That's the most ridiculous thing in the world. I, I know the rules. I mean, I've been here for 22 years. I've developed hundreds of properties. Oh, who are you kidding? Of course I need. So why I call? If I didn't think I needed a permit, who am I calling? Why am I calling everybody that I called? My actions certainly proved other than what he stated. Um, and as far as putting a berm, I had to put a berm around the property. Um, I can put a berm around the pond. The berm is to retain water. If in an event of a massive flood, the water can, you know, it's a, it, it can go over the berm, you know, and I can retain the, the required amount. Um, they did, he did state 42 loads plus 17. That, that's a fact. Yes, I did bring in that stuff. He has a ring camera on his house, so he can easily, you know, he, it's all being recorded. I'm not hiding anything. Um, and as far as the amount of fill, um, we have Fishing Hole Park. Um, Country Estates Park, let me clarify. The town received... Oof, it must have been 110 loads that were dumped on the baseball foot, uh, what do you call it, the field, the open field that was there. Uh, so the town had about 110 loads, and uh, they put out a bid to grade it. And that's, that's not even an acre. I don't even believe that field is an acre. So to put 110 loads and grade it on us in an area it doesn't really affect a lot, doesn't change a lot. On top of which, I brought in an additional 30 loads I donated to the town to help grow grass, and it was free of rocks and glass, etc. So. 
to bring in 100 loads, and that this has been done before, it sounds like a lot, but it's really not a lot on, a, on, a, on an acre lot. Of course, depending upon the elevation, 100 loads in Rolling Oaks would be a lot more than in Sunshine Ranches because Rolling Oaks is, is, is high. On my property there, you have to have a certain elevation, and, and I meet all those requirements. Um, it was also stated that I, I brought in all that fill and I spread it. I didn't. I was constructing the berm. I had pictures. I'm sorry that you didn't get them, Russell, but I can prove that as well. Um, she, uh, Marianne also stated that code doesn't work on Saturday. They actually do work on Saturday. 100% they work on Saturday. Marlon was out there. He came out there. The system worked. Code came out to my property. The people were taking video cameras and, and they were taking pictures and the systems work. I'm proud of our town residents. Um, why was the issue with level two fill permit, not a level three? Because I didn't have the topo, so I had to come in and get the level two, and that's and then I wound up getting a level three because I was waiting on the topo. So hopefully that answers her question. Um, the claim that I've done this before, been cited. I haven't been cited for this before. I've been out in the community and I've worked with other residents that have been cited and helped correct their problems. I have been involved with someone who did a driveway. He was cited for no fill. I helped him fix that. That was on Mustang. And on my other property that I owned in Appaloosa, I was filling. I had a fill permit. First started off with a stockpile permit. Then I had a, fill, a level three fill permit and I filled that property. And my neighbor I won't mention her name. No matter what I did or how big I built the berm, she, it was, she was just convinced that I was flooding her and it was just far from the truth. Central Broward came out to that situation. Rod came out to that situation. Multiple people, the mayor was contacted when he first got elected to try and, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. So I didn't do anything wrong. I did everything with permits, but try and convince that woman that, that I didn't, you can't. And then, you know, that's a problem with bringing in Phil. It's going to upset somebody, but everything was done right on that property as well. Um, I'll make this short. Again, I didn't notify Mac of my intentions. He saw me out there on Friday. He told me I couldn't bring in the Phil. He actually called code enforcement and was reporting me ahead of time. How could he do that if he, I didn't tell him I was bringing Phil? All right? I did tell him. Um, again, uh, my topo was not out of date. The town does accept a topo. That my topo was dated. No activity had taken place since that topo. I never bought in any fill, never tried to grade any paddocks or anything like that. Um, again, I have no repeat history of this. I just work with other residents that have had had problems. Okay, that, that's it. I'll just I'll just end it here. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Um, I'll yield my time. Thank you. Great. Thank you, George. All right, um, Marianne. We'll, we're going to do one more one more round, Marianne, and then George, and uh, so. Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry, I had a PTSD moment. I was married to someone like that, and that's why I'm still single 20 years later. <laughs> Please, no, no person. I know, I know, I know. So it's really hard to come back on this, except we have to stick with the facts, okay? And the facts are he sits on the drainage board, he sits on your committees for comprehensive planning. He writes the rules for your fill application. He is the one that writes the rules, but he feels he can break the rules because after all, you do know him, which would mean that he's using or he's abusing his power on those committees with connections that he thinks he has. <sighs> Regardless if you're bringing fill in for a berm, he's saying that it's necessary for him to break the permitting rules because he got a deal on fill and he needed it, absolutely had to have it for a berm. But why did you not apply for all the permits properly? Because I did read your fill permit application. You have to have everything in hand 
including topo. You have to bring four copies for the different departments. You have to bring notarized statements before you begin a fill application. And it isn't filed with Julio. It has to be filed with the engineer that's on your own fill permit application, which I would wish that he read maybe, okay? Because he said, I sent it to Julio. That's not, you know, applying for a driver's license doesn't give you a license to drive until you get that permit. Now here's someone who knew on Friday, I got a deal on Phil, let me call my associate friend, whatever you want to call it, at Central Broward. I have his private number to call him at 6 o'clock at night, and I'll have him come Monday. Let me tell you what his neighbor, Max, went through to get a Central Broward permit. You have to apply for a meeting with the directors of the Central Broward Drainage Committee, and it might take you a month to get that appointment. Once you get that appointment, you have to talk to the entire board of directors, there's 10 of them, and explain why do you want to fill your property. After that, it could take you six months or longer to get your permit. Apparently, this was done in an hour or two on Monday without going in front of the board of Central Broward Drainage. The other problem I have with this is he admitted he brought in 57 loads between that and his application for a level two permit. He knew he had already violated a level two permit, which al only allows you eight truckloads. He signed his name to a permit that he already knew he had lied about to whoever he submitted it with. Then when he realized that these loads were being counted and that he was already over 15 loads when Marlin came, he said, uh-oh, I've got to go get a level three. Quick, someone help me. So within a day or two, he went from eight truckloads to over 500 and I think it's, it's 9,700 cubic yards of fill, which is unbelievable. I know Mac was crying when he heard Rod tell him that he had 9,700 cubic yards. His entire property is going to be flooded. It's going to go into the pond. It's going to go into the canal. It's going to come onto my property and my neighbor who is here tonight. We have horses. We're going to be flooded. The other thing that he didn't bring up to you is that when you impact the waters of the United States, this is your Army Corps of Engineers, that water is impacted. You have to bring in the Army Corps because now the berm is going to funnel all the water into the pond. And that pond will then go into the canal, which then goes into the C-11. But anyway, this is um, a bigger case than what I can even begin to uncover tonight. And I would really like a transcript of what he said because he's admitted to lying on a fill permit to you all. And you either follow your permit application, but if you let one person get privileges that you don't allow everybody else, that's not fair according to the law. The law is equal for everyone. And you go ahead and try to call the town and say, by the way, I got a deal. I'm going to bring it in, but give me a, a permit two days later. You'll be laughed out of this town, OK? So we're special privileges given. This is what I have to leave to all of you, to search your hearts with what you just heard. Is that fair? Is that being allowed to everyone? Were things done properly? And please make that decision and do it with honesty and love for this community. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne. Again, thank you, Marianne. You know, she's just misinformed. I don't know what else to say about that one. Um, I also have horses. The, the property has a barn. I have paddocks. I'm putting fill in the paddocks. There's existing fences. There's uh, five or six different paddocks 
with existing fences that have been there prior to me bringing in any film. And I'm putting the material in those paddocks and I am not raising the fence line. Anybody can come to the property and see that the fence was sticking out of the ground because the area had decayed and decomposed over time. I was simply restoring the paddocks. The existing fencing will remain and is off the ground and it's at the elevation that you would naturally install it at. You wouldn't install a fence this high off the ground. You'd install it six, eight inches off the ground. And that's pretty much where the fill level that I put restoring the fill that was there. I'm sure M Mr. Mack would even testify that he could look at those paddocks and see that those areas that were way down where the horses walked back and forth and everything was compressed. Um, with respect to the berm, I'm willing to, if you want, uh, whatever, whatever it is, you tell Central Broward to tell me or Rod, I'm, I'm here to be part of the solution, not the problem. No problem modifying my fill permit, modifying the berm. Let me, let me help out. No big deal. Um, and I did not lie. That's, that's, that's just misinformed. Um, I was required to build the berm. Level two fill permit, level three fill permit. The permit is for grading. I wasn't grading. I was constructing the berm with the material that was required for me to bring on the property. Either way, at the end of the day, it is what it is. I'm trying my best in the community. I was issued a level three permit. I complied with everything. I had everything in advance. Sometimes the cart gets put before the horse. I don't know. Um, I'm done. But, you know, thank you to everybody. The system works. Great. Thank you, George. All right. Um, once again, I really want to thank um, everyone who spoke this evening. Um, obviously, it's easy to see that there's a difference of opinion um, and that there are some things we need to look at from a, uh, I know, as I said, I would, I wrote down some, some follow-up items that I feel like we need to look into, some things that I want to clarify um, and that I want to make sure are proper going forward. Um, and, and I, I'll, you know, and I'll, I'll be doing that. Um, I, I want to reiterate one thing that uh, I said before, and, and I feel like um, I really want to say again, and that is that, um, you know, I, I appreciate the, the emails that were brought forward. Um, we, are, we are very fortunate and blessed to have the staff that we have. Are they perfect? No, they're not perfect. Um, and, and they have, you know, a lot of pressure. There's a lot, there's a lot of other projects going on. They do an exceptional job. Um, and, and, and I believe that um, we are very fortunate to have them there. So, I, 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 you know, I, I am not giving them the opportunity to defend themselves tonight um, because that's not what this is about. But um, I wanted to make it clear that we have an exceptional staff and they did, they, they did their job here. Does that mean that it can't be improved? Absolutely not. Absolutely it can be improved. You know, um, everything that I've, you know, do at work, you know, my day job, somebody could come in there and pick out a few things that need to be improved. So, so if, you're, if you're not improving, then, then you're, you're in trouble. So, um, but um, as you know, we've got some things that, that, uh, that I know I'm going to be following up with Andy on. Um, some questions that I have, and Julio, um, just and, and Rod, frankly. Now, I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. I'm just saying I have some questions. There's some things that, um, valid points that were brought up this evening that I want to understand better. Um, and maybe when I understand them better, maybe I'll say, okay, we did the right thing. Maybe when I understand them better, I'll say, you know what, we need to make some changes. And so... Um, so that's, that's what I know, that's my takeaway items. Um, in, this, in this forum here, I didn't want to, I didn't necessarily want to open it up for the council to speak, but I don't want to limit you either. If, if, you, if you want to say something, please do, but this was mostly just to get, get the, you know, the two sides out so that we could start, start a process of, of working together and, and making our town better. Yeah, David. Um, I just want to go on the record that I believe that absolutely no one in this administration 
is on the take. Absolutely no one. I have full confidence in Andy and the entire staff code. None of these folks are on the take. I'm going to put it on me because I, I speak with these folks frequently. And this is honesty, integrity. That's what these folks have. Um, that's exactly, that's all I really want to say because right. I, I believe in what we have here. Yeah, yeah. And I think it goes, I, I agree 100%. And I think it goes beyond that. I think they, they work, you know, aside from, from on the take, which would be the worst situation, but they work with integrity in all that they do. And, um, and, and we, are, we are fortunate and blessed to have every one of them. And I, I want to make sure that's, that's clear. All right. Um, thank you all for coming out. I know this is, is sometimes a little painful to go through, but it's also important to go through. It's important uh, that we have the opportunity for both sides to fully express their thoughts. Um, you know, in a lot of ways it lined up, and in a lot of ways, you know, we, we need to look at we need to look at some things. So, um, so thank you for your indulgence. Thank you for your uh, patience as we've gone through this. All right. Um, Board reports. Do we have any board reports tonight? <laughs> Seeing none. Uh, council member comments. I'll go. Thanks. I'll be very brief. Thanks. Uh, I, I feel a calling in the room next door, so <laughs> it's going to be a quickie. Um, just want to, you know, um, the West Coast got hit really hard. You know, you've been out there. You have you have property out there. That's, it's been destroyed um, you know our hearts go out to those people and you know anything a lot of a lot of a lot of residents in Southwest ranches are going out there every day they're doing an amazing job and uh, and I just want to commend them for it I mean they're going back and forth uh, seven days a week right now water f uh, fuel you know you name it uh, it's going on and I just want to say you know thank you to all those people you know I, I could sit here and probably draw a list of names up but I mean, there's somebody there's always somebody you leave out so right. you're better off not doing that um, one of the uh, things that just to mention we're gonna we no longer gonna have the flow mobile here for the next couple of months they've moved out their resources mm -hmm. to the West Coast uh, because it's them. obvious everybody's lost a lot of stuff yeah, good for them. you know all the uh, uh, vehicles uh, interesting situation I read about uh, I'm sure some of you read it and that it deals with a new, there's a new, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, situation now with electrical vehicles. They catch fire with them when they get in, in, in inundated in salt water. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, something I didn't know happens, but apparently it happened a lot on the West Coast. Um, so anyway, the, the Flowmobile will be here, well, will be gone for the next couple, probably until January, February, until they can get, uh, you know, their, their, back on their feet over there and hopefully the, they'll be able to do it very quickly it was a very costly storm over 100 people died you know from it um, fortunately it, it got weaker I, I spoke with my son who went who is in Orlando and, and uh, area and he said they're kind of open uh, they're open for business as usual they do have a lot of tree damage stuff like that but apparently it, it's being worked out you know that kind of thing I was also asked by um, some residents here on what we were going to do with the hurricane debris and and and, and I and I didn't take it seriously unfortunately to my, my my disadvantage and I said well I put my three palm fronds on the on the uh, on the on the bulk pile and, and she didn't think that was very funny so but uh, we don't we didn't have enough to arise the, the, the correct answer is we didn't have enough damage to rise to the level of warranting special pickups and FEMA and things of that nature. And, and I'm sure Andy can add to that uh, later on if he knows what those levels are and all that. Um, the other thing I just want to bring up is um, Rolling Oaks Halloween on uh, 1029 uh, out, at, out at the barn. Um, bring candy, bring uh, some decorations, your car, and uh, you know try to and have some fun with the kids. You know, and uh, we'll go forward from there. And that's all I have right now, Mayor. Great. Thank you, Gary. Got some quick, 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 quick comments. Okay. Thank you, Bob. 
couple of fun things. Um, last council meeting, I mentioned that we were going to work with Davey to put together a citizens ride along program. Uh, and Davey is, thinks it's a good idea. So we're gonna work out the details on how we do administer a program like that. But ultimately my goal is we used to have an active partition, a participation in the, uh, the citizens uh, police academy over in Davey. I know Steve, you've gone through that. Um, and uh, I'd like to get that restarted again because the more eyes and ears we have around town, the quicker Davey can get engaged in, in some of the situations that occur. So I think they go hand in glove and we'll work with them to, uh, to bring that to fruition. The second thing that I've been working with Andy and Davey, uh, and this is really over on the fire department side, is uh, last year I went through the CERT team training which is a I believe a 10-week program where they bring you up to speed on emergency responses that are necessary you get iso training you uh you really understand how the incident command structure works we actually have 10 residents that have been certified in town but since it's all run out of davy they kind of lose interest over time there's one folk uh, one gentleman who lives in jim's district who he's at every meeting so I discussed it with him kind of first to say, what do you think about getting it rolling over here? I continue to ask Davey to provide the training and they're, they're happy to do that, but um, how can we begin to engage our residents in incidents like what happened with uh, the last hurricane in our own town? So again, we're working with Davey Fire Department on that to come up with uh, how we can work this out between the two groups. Um, last thing, uh, I think we've all gotten phone calls, emails. It's been a topic on Facebook on the transition to uh, waste management from our former provider. A lot of concerns uh, online expressed, a lot of concerns to us. Uh, the, uh, the town, the administration has put together FAQs which try to answer the majority of the questions that we're all fielding uh, as a broad team. Uh, I actually got an email the other day from somebody who, you know, when I read these things, I always <laughs> kind of assume the worst because they all start out the same way. Dear councilman, I, it's usually I have a concern, but in this case, it was quite the opposite. Uh, the resident didn't get the level of service they expected on bulk. Basically, the guy who had picked up their bulk trash left a lot behind. Uh, he gave the guy a piece of his mind. <laughs> the guy gave him a piece too, which isn't exactly the customer service that we were really looking for. He then contacted waste management. They sent out the uh, field manager who deals with bulk. The field manager actually brought in another bulk truck, expressed to the resident that this isn't their core values. That's not the way they plan on, you know, deploying the services to the town and the manager and the other truck driver took out rakes and, and, uh, and shovels and, and cleaned up the mess that the first guy left behind. So I'm really hoping that that's the level of service we get across town. And as well, if you don't, call them, call us. We, we really want to make sure that we're getting the most out of waste management. And the, man, and the resident was very happy. Yeah, good <clears throat> point. Yeah, the resident sent us a glowing email uh, at, the, at the end of the process because they're their needs were met and their expectations were met. So it's a good story. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, David. All right. Um, thank everybody that stuck around uh, for coming out. Uh, a couple issues. The um, If you remember during the last meeting, uh, I had asked um, legal to create um, a uh, uh, resolution regarding the Broward and animal services issue. That's going to be on the agenda at the next meeting. Um, so um, we're going to be joining all the other municipalities opposing that uh, new policy. Um, for the uh, LPRs, they are all scheduled to be uh, up and ready and implemented on October 31st, unless there are uh, some little hiccups in the system. Um, I know that the residents, many residents in Sunshine Ranches have been victims of uh, car break-ins, car thefts. And um, once again, keep your car, Bob, out of your car, lock your cars. Leave, take your guns in. Um, don't leave your guns in the car. Um, this is just 
it's just it's going to happen. We're going to get the LPRs be able to uh, register license plates, but uh, it's still common sense with keeping your key fob away from your car. And then uh, last on my waste management issue, uh, I had a neighbor who actually uh, had his uh, trash receptacle stolen. And um, we, within a few hours, I had Barbara on the phone with him. And he called me back and he said, Dave, the, these are good people. They, they really want to serve us. This is not the service that we had um, from the um, previous folks. So um, I'm confident that we made a good choice. I'm, I want to thank uh, Andy for um, selecting these folks. They're, they're really, um, they really did it. And we had that conference back in February. We had, that, um, we had our folks that showed up in February. And we made the decision. One person uh, operating a truck, we're going to be um, more mechanized picking up the bins, and that in turn saved the residents money, what would have been if we had two people on a truck. So um, I think it was a good decision to go with who we have. Jim? Oh, one more thing. No, your time's up. <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Jimbo, I'm working on the um, Davy PD in your driveway. All right. Good evening, Mayor. Jim, it is uh, it is awesome to see you back up here, and you were you were missed. And pleasure to be back. <laughs> so, know, thank and I thank the town for indulging me in the two weeks, that, uh, the two meetings that I missed on the phone. Uh, I did my best to try to listen to everything that was happening, and I may have fell asleep a couple times. I'm not sure it was right <laughs> after surgery, but I am here. Uh, I do have a walker. I probably will revert to a cane next week. Uh, it's been three weeks, and. Uh, it's going along. There's a, some days it's a bear, some days it's not. But, you know, all this healing is for good. It's not for bad like before. So, you know, I'm blessed. And, Mayor, I'd like to say that, you know, the wife and I, our thoughts and prayers go out to the West Coast also. Uh, when I saw that devastation, uh, I firsthand worked down there a few hours after Andrew, and it reminded me so much of Andrew as to what happened. And I know that the relief can't get there fast enough. I know some of the residents are very... Uh, ups, upset because the, the relief can't get there, but it's very difficult, you know, to get that there to certain people and stuff, and I witnessed that in Homestead, but, you know, I, our prayers and thoughts go out to those people. Uh, also, real quick, um, we had a lady ask about traffic uh, last meeting, wanted to know what some of the uh, details were about this new safety and traffic committee, and uh, in September, we have 13 officers here in town, and those 13 officers back in September the officers of the town here wrote 159 citations for, uh, for uh, traffic violations. Um, all but about 10 of them were for speeding. Uh, those are probably some of the residents here in town. It may be some of the people passing through. And then uh, in August, at the end of August, they, they give us a report each month. But at the end of August, the special detail that we had put on, thanks to Andy and, and the town here, allowing it to be uh, go forward, uh, they move around town from place to place. I think there's two officers, four hours a day, three days a week or so. They issued uh, 86 citations in the month of August. And, uh, you know, they move, like I said, all over town. So if some of you got the tickets for speeding, then I'm sorry. But they're going to be out there for another probably good close to six months ago. It was a year that we'll have them. So just look out. And, and come to find out, we have a new officer, Jose Nunez. He completed his speed measuring course uh, for radar and laser. So we now have 13 officers that are assigned to the town of Southwest Ranches that have state-required laser and radar uh, certificates. And overall, the citations, now this is the good part, the citations townwide in Southwest Ranches increased 100% over 2021. So we're doing everything we can to slow this traffic down in your area, your community. And you may not think so, but sooner or later, those officers are going to show up in your area. I, I ask you to slow down. That's all. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jim. Um, just a couple follow-up. I actually wasn't going to say anything at all, but you all spur, spurred me on with a couple comments. Um, just wanted to echo, Bob, what you're talking about with the CERT program. It's an amazing program. Um, I did have the, the privilege to go through it. But, you know, um, I have spent a, a pretty good amount of time over on the other coast um, because we do have some property over there. 
And, um, and I got to tell you, you forget, you know, you know what it's like to go through a hurricane because the vast majority of us have been through it. We've been through without the power or the water, you know, and all that. But you forget what it's really like until you're there in the neighborhood with all, you know, your house. We've got a, we've got a home over there. Um, and it's on the water, obviously. So, you know, it, it was totally destroyed, to be honest with you. But, um, but we're okay, you know. It's, our, it's, it's a vacation home. You know, we, we, don't, we don't have the memories in there. We don't have, we, 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 can, we can get sweaty for a weekend and then come back and take a shower and sit in the AC and sleep well and all that. You forget what it's like, you know, to really endure that day after day after day. And, and, and so anything we can do for those folks, you know, we, we need to be doing it. And I know this town is amazing in, in what it has done um, for that there. But, but with the CERT, um, it's critical. It really is because it's, it's how we can help ourselves after an event like that should it hit our town. Um, you know, they, they, the CERT folks, they go around, they assess structures to see if they're safe or they're not. Frankly, they go through structures to see if anyone needs help or if anyone didn't make it in there and they, and they mark the, the structures accordingly. It's serious business but it needs to be done. And if we can do that ourselves, then the true professionals at it can be really handling the things that really absolutely are critical and need to be done right now, rather than these other things that we can do. So I would really encourage you to consider that and to get involved in CERT. It's, it's an amazing program. Um, and then the last thing, just following up on the waste management, I have been thrilled I think we you know waste management WM has done an outstanding job to get us off on the right foot um, transition is always difficult no matter what you know what the transition is <laughs> moving from one house to another whatever the transition is one job to another you know one waste provider to another that's always there's always going to be some bumps in the road um, but they've done an amazing job and and um, and I just I just want to say let's just be careful not to take out the frustration that we had with the vendor, the prior vendor, and take it out on the current vendor because they are doing an amazing job. And I know as a town, we're, we're pretty frustrated with waste as, as a topic, but, um, but there's you know, a new sheriff in town, they're doing a great job, and, um, and let's give them the benefit of the doubt as we go over these, these first, uh, first bumps in the roads. All right. All right, uh, legal comments. None, Mayor. Oh, thank you, Keith. <laughs> Andy, administrative comments. I, I have nothing, Mayor. You guys are the best. You guys are much better than we are. All right, item number nine, please. An ordinance of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, amending section 110-110, adequacy of parks and recreation facilities of the Town's Unified Land Development Code <clears throat> to amend the park impact fee schedule, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. Motion to approve. Second. Mayor, this is second reading, so we'll incorporate by reference all of the comments made at first reading. Very good. Thank you, Keith. Um, I just want to do another quick shout out to Russell. Um, he identified this area where uh, we really should be um, gaining additional revenue, not, not from our current residents, but from, from new builders coming in. And um, so I appreciate that. Uh, something we should have been doing all along, frankly. So thank you, Russell. Um, any other council comments? Somebody make a comment because we're waiting for Bob to come back. <laughs> Bob can hear us. <laughs> but he can't vote. I don't want to. <laughs> I can go through everybody else. But I thank you, Russell, for doing a great job. <laughs> Russell, you did a good job. Keep saying that again. <laughs> Trust me, I was just in there. It's like a state. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll give it just a second here. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Bob. All right. If we can uh, please call the roll. Council Member Albritton? Yes. Council Member Hartman? Yes. Council Member Kaczynski? Yes. Vice Mayor Jablonski? Yes. Mayor Bright Cruz? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Item 10 is an ordinance of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, amending section 070 110 
of the Town of Southwest Ranch's Unified Land Development Code pertaining to election signage, providing for conflict, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Motion to approve. Second. Very good. Uh, this is uh, an item that uh, okay. Council Member um, Kaczynski brought to our attention and um, really needed some cleaning up. Thank you, David, for yep. uh, bringing this to our attention and, and doing some great work on this item. Thank you. Is there any uh, council, council member comment on this item? Any, none. I'm sorry, the previous item, I forgot to ask for public comment. <laughs> I apologize. I think we were good. I hope we were good. My apologies. Any, uh, any, any uh, public comment on this item? Seeing none. No, I know you would have, you would have spoken up if you had something to say. So <laughs> I think I'm good. All right. Public co uh, comment closed. Please call the item. Councilmember Albritton? Yes. Councilmember Hartman? Yes. Councilmember Kaczynski? Yes. Vice Mayor Jablonski? Yes. Mayor Breitkruz? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, Mayor, item 11 is a resolution, a resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, approving the First Amendment to the interlocal agreement between Broward County and the Town of Southwest Ranches for surtex funded municipal transportation project, uh, uh, Green Meadows Roadway Drainage, SWRA-022, authorizing the mayor, town administrator, and town attorney to enter into an agreement and providing an effective date. Motion to approve. Second. Great, thank you. This is uh, more of a administrator. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, yeah Mayor, just, just very briefly. This is a project that was funded by, by the county by surtax due to supply chain issues and other issues. The costs are up on it. The county is giving us more money to complete the project. This is just our acceptance of more money from the county. Thank you. Sounds good. Is there any other council comment on this item? Seeing none, any public comment on this item? Seeing none, please call the roll. Councilmember Albritton? Yes. Councilmember Hartman? Yes. Councilmember Kaczynski? Yes. Vice Mayor Jablonski? Yes. Mayor Breckers? Yes. Motion passes. Mayor, um, the next set of items, and we're going to have a similar set of items at the next meeting, and just for the general for the public to know the town went out for a procurement for continuing services contracts what that means is there are certain vendors that under the Florida statutes you're not allowed to actually ask the price for when you do a procurement you just have to ask them for their qualifications it has to deal with architects engineers surveyors etc there's a list directly in the Florida statutes they call it the CCNA um, and once you get those vendors then you're allowed to ask them for prices, but you have to get them first. So the town went out for an RFP for uh, architects, engineers, surveyors. Tonight's meeting, we have the three architects that the selection uh, committee has brought forward for you to start uh, continuing service contracts with. So uh, if it's okay with you, Mayor, I would just ask Russell to read in 12, 13, and 14 into the record. They're all the same. They're just the names of the vendors are different. Um, and again, any contract uh, that's over the procurement threshold would have to come back to you for approval. This just gives you the tool to hire them. Thank you, Keith. It's going to be a while. <laughs> this is a resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, accepting the selection and negotiation committee's recommendation and awarding a continuing contract to Salt Michelson Architects, Inc. for the ubiquitous services contained within its response to the town's request for letters of interest related to architectural services, general civil engineering services, landscape architectural services, and mechanical engineering services as attached here to as Exhibit A, authorizing Salt Michelson Architects, Inc. to utilize the services of Keith & Associates, Inc., BuildWorks, Design LLC, and Johnson Structural Group, Inc. as approved subconsultants for such work as outlined in its response authorizing the mayor, town administrator, and town attorney to enter into an agreement in substantially the same form as attached here to as Exhibit B and providing an effective date. Item number 13 is a resolution of the town council of the town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, accepting the selection and negotiation committee's recommendation and awarding a continuing contract to Chisholm, re Chisholm Architects, Inc. for the ubiquitous services contained within its response to the town's request for letters of interest related to architectural services as attached here to is Exhibit A, authorizing the mayor, town administrator, and town attorney to enter into an agreement in substantially the same form as attached here to is Exhibit B and providing an effective date. Item number 14 is a resolution of the town council of the town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, accepting the selection and negotiation committee's recommendation and awarding a continuing uh, contract to CPZ Architects, Inc. 
for the ubiquitous services contained within its response to the town's request for letters of interest including architectural services, general civil engineering services, landscape architectural services, geotechnical engineering services, general environmental engineering services, land surveying services, structural engineering services, and cost estimating as attached here to is Exhibit A. Authorizing CPZ Architects, Inc. to utilize the services of Chen Moore and Associates, Inc., Terracon Consultants, Stoner and Associates, Inc., Mun Engineers, Inc., and CMS Construction Management Services as approved subconsultants for such work as outlined in its response. Authorizing the Mayor, Town Administrator, and Town Attorney to enter into an agreement in substantially the same form as attached here to as Exhibit B and providing an effective date. Great. Thank you, you Russell. One motion? Uh, Mayor, what we can do is we can have a motion and a second. We'll apply that motion in a second to each one, and then we'll vote uh, on each of them independently, if that's okay with you. And I was also just speaking to Andy. Uh, while that was a lot, next month is like 10 times more than that. Yeah. So we're respectfully requesting, we haven't done this in a long time, but essentially to have a consent agenda next month in which all the engineering contracts uh, will be on a consent agenda for approval rather than having to debate something that's not really even ready to be debated. Right. That's, I'm, I'm fine with that. Does the rest of the council okay with that or are there objections? I'm fine. No, do you, do you need a motion for that? Um, I'll make microphone. a motion microphone. to approve the first one. Do you need a motion to create a consent, uh, no, consent agenda? Next? No, um, we, it, by law, you're allowed to have them. Um, there, uh, there's a gentleman sitting to my right who uh, believed that uh, the residents should be able to debate every item and would always pull them from the consent agenda so the town stopped doing it. <laughs> Consent agenda is yeah, more practical, <laughs> but but in this case, um, it's actually it's not, yeah. I'm, I think I might be that gentleman. So, no, actually, <laughs> oh really? No, well I, both I was actually, okay. Actually, I, think I know I know I did it yeah. myself, but yeah. Gary may have done what it as happened? well. You did it, and then you were off for a couple of years. And then he okay, started, so. okay. Um, but I, I'm fine with it in this case because this is really yeah, voluminous. So you're talking about a one-off thing, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. A Just one a one-timer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Are you okay with it? Yeah. 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 Is everybody else okay with it? I mean, if you're not, it's, you know, it, it, yeah. okay. All right. I think we're good. I think we're good. So, so we, we need a, so if I understood what you're saying, we're going to do a motion, a second, apply it to all three, but we'll take three individual votes. Yeah. yeah I just made the yeah. first motion. Okay. I need a second. Second. We got a second. Okay. Very Pete, good. Just a question. You're saying next month is longer than 1700 pages. It's going to be much longer. That's Okay. Yeah, Ru Russell has to, a question. To that, that. to that point, do we, do we uh, since, since we're on the subject of that, we were having a debate about the amount of uh, documentation that was provided and the amount of trees that were killed in the you know, production of this book. And the question was, do, does council really desire to see all of the backup documentation as it relates to the proposer's middle? I mean, the, the agreement and the resolution clearly, you know, that, that supporting documentation is needed. But does the council really want to see the proposer's middles and... We can provide it separately, digitally, if you like, as opposed to being a, a part of the agenda that, you know, also makes the download of the agenda for the public a very long time as well. Digitally is perfect. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I'd say, yeah. I'd say let's go electronically with, with the, the heavy stuff. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's my vote. What did you say? Just do it digitally? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Are, are we okay with that? I know there's... I am. You okay? Yeah, Jim, you're okay? I, I, okay. I, I, I so to clarify, well, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I want to make it clear to the general public, everything will be online. Yes. Okay. Right. So right. anyone can get whatever they want to see online. It's just in terms the of printing. printing this out. Is, right. It's is huge. Enormous. It's enormous. Yeah. huge. Yeah, I mean, this is like, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of paper, but it's also a lot of, uh, a, lot of information. a lot of maintenance on the, on the copier machine and everything. <laughs> you know, all that stuff adds up. So, um, all right. So, so this is a kind of a one-time deal. Um, to forego the printing of all the uh, the detail and to put it on a consent a consent agenda for this one time. Okay. All right. So we have a motion and a second that applies to all three. We will take three individual votes. Um, but let me open up. Uh, well, first, any council comment on any one of these three items? No. Seeing none. Is there any public comment on any one of the three items? Thank you, Newell. We missed we missed hearing from you. <laughs> Newell Hollingsworth, 199th Avenue. <clears throat> Number one, some of us don't have email. Number two, so if uh, I want to take a look at it, how many pages is it? 
or how many trees? Just pick it up and show. Yeah. Just pick it up and here. show. No, this That's is this very similar, several this reams is of paper. Yeah. This is okay, there's a printed version. copy here. This is yes. going to be the, a, the short. This is a short version. Wait, this is three of them. Next month is ten. Yeah. It's going to be more than three times that size. Right. Right here. Uh, I don't think I, anyone could read that between now and then. I, 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 you know, right. unless you put it in that <laughs> fine print that they print the Bible in, you know, and then it'd still be 10,000 pages. Anyway, anyway. But what I w wanted to get up here and talk to you about was I look where it's on some of them saying, and subcontractor, it says. How are we to keep the subcontractor when he isn't paid by the contractor that we're giving the RFP to from suing us when he, the subcontractor doesn't pay the subcontractor? What is the guarantee? Uh, I'd like to know what, how do we get protected from the subcontractor and the subcontractor of the subcontractor? Because sometimes it'll go down two or three or four levels. So how do we protect ourselves? And uh, basically, that's my big question okay. on this whole thing. Because in the past, we've had the primary, and that was it. We haven't seen the subcontractors. And, and now we're seeing all the subcontractors. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Noel. Any other public comment? Yeah, yeah Gay. Welcome back, Gay. Yeah, this is you know this is like this is like uh, a classic right here. It's like old old home week. It is okay. Um, what it is is they have to the uh, primary has to have a release from the suburbs. I happen to be number three suburb, and number three suburb doesn't. Nobody gives a damn about us. We don't get paid, so we had to make sure that we got paid. And I was, I was notifying directly, almost like a lien, to the primary. And, but, yeah, they said that one and two had to definitely give a release. But three, it's kind of like you're out in the dark. Hmm. So he said there might be three primaries. No. Th I mean, three bit. Uh, Subs. Yeah, suburbs. The third one you don't have to worry about. But the first and second, usually you get a release from them that they've been paid. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Any other public comment? Seeing none, public comment closed. Yeah, I think, you know, there's a bond, the, 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 uh, the contract that we write with the primary vendor, there's a bond there that is there and we actually used it not too long ago with one of our contracts where the um the uh, yeah the and we used it this so week as well do we again for another project yeah so it's there and the, and, and the process works it works yeah all right i think we are good if we can please call the roll on the first we're talking about item, item number, number 12. 12. can i just ask a quick yeah, question sure, sure. about that so keith if this is i don't want to say a recurring problem but we're talking about two instances that are fairly recent do we eliminate, if, if the primary is not paying the subs, there's a problem. Do we exclude those companies from doing business with us when we go out to bid again if they're not paying their subs? We're not legally allowed to exclude them from having a right to bid, but I can assure you that the selection committee knows who has been in violation in the past, and okay. I would doubt it would ever even get to my desk. So it's part of our criteria, our it's evaluation ours. criteria. Yeah. Perfect. Probably Thank a pretty you. low score. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do not yeah, pay like bills. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I heard from the rumor mill that a contractor uh, fainted in front of Rod last week. Mm. Last month. Last month. <laughs> Any other council Take comments? Heart attack. True story. Seeing none. Um, <laughs> if you can please uh, call the roll, Russell, for item number 12. Council Member Albritton? Yes. Council Member Hartman? Yes. Council Member Kaczynski? Yes. Vice Mayor Jablonski? Yes. Mayor Bright Cruz? Yes. Item number 13? Yes, you can please call the roll on that item. Councilmember Albritton? Yes. Councilmember Hartman? Yes. Councilmember Kaczynski? Yes. Vice Mayor Jablonski? Yes. Mayor Bright Cruz? Yes. Item number 14? Councilmember Albritton? Yes. Councilmember Hartman? Yes. Councilmember Kaczynski? Yes. Vice Mayor Jablonski? Yes. Mayor Bright Cruz? Yes. Item passes. All three items pass. Very good. Um, item number 15 is the approval of minutes from July 14th. Are there any additions? 
correction. Oh, yeah, is there a motion? Yeah, motion to approve. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> is there any additions aside, uh, corrections aside from me on uh, my protocol? Um, seeing none, is there any public corrections, additions? Seeing none, I think we're good. If we can please call the roll. Mayor, I'm sorry, I didn't get the second. Who made the second? I think Bob did. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Councilmember Albritton? Yes. Councilmember Hartman? Yes. Councilmember Kaczynski? Yes. Vice Mayor Jablonski? Yes. Mayor Bright Cruz? Yes. A motion to adjourn.